So, just another quick video based on a few questions that's been floating around about how you handle volume and gain in Virtual DJ. And uh, it's kind of a touchy subject, so almost uh, didn't want to touch upon it uh, because, uh, well, everybody has an opinion, but this is mine, so you can kind of take it or leave it. It's okay if you have another opinion. So the, the volume we're talking about here is the master volume, whatever leaves Virtual DJ. Where do you set that? How do you control that, really? And this is how I think it should be done. Okay. So uh, when you, uh, I'll go, go through it uh, really quick, and then uh, I'll come back and make some uh, some additional points. But just really quick, uh, the first place you can adjust something can you like volume uh, on a track is on the gain knob. You don't want to do that. That's not what gain is for. Gain is for for gaining, not for volume. So that's the wrong place. The next place you can do it is on the up fader, so you can keep it down here, and you can adjust the, the volume that comes out by doing this, but that's not what it's meant for. It's meant for mixing, so this generally goes all the way up if a track is playing. So that's also not the place to control the volume. Then there's crossfader. As you might suspect, that's also not the place to control the volume. That's for mixing also. And then you get over here to the master, and that's the place you control the volume if you hand it inside Virtual DJ. Um, so that's basically it. Yeah, the, the, uh, the cliff notes, if you want to, you handle the gain, normally by letting go. So DJ handling the gain, you use this for mixing, you use this for mixing, and you use this for master volume, general volume, if the master volume is handled inside virtual DJ. We'll get back to that a little bit later. So if that was all, then that's, uh, that's, that's how we used to do it, if you ask me. But now I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail. So if we go back to gain, uh, what happens when I load tracks? Well, as you can see, nothing happens. Here's another track. And nothing happens. Uh, is that because auto gain is not enabled? Let's check. No, it's say to auto, which is a correct setting, if you ask me. That's also an auto plus remember. That remembers if it changes the gain of a specific track. That just messes up stuff. So auto is the correct one. So why is it not changing? Is it not doing anything when I load tracks? Yes, it is. If I hover over the gain up here, you can see this is actually at minus 56 or 1.56 dB. If I load another track, it's at minus 0 0.69 dB. So uh, this, these are the actual values. So it's not changing because it's the easiest. If you have to adjust it a little bit on your controller, which occasionally you do, I, I'll give everybody that, that is, you can in a situation when that is relevant, then it's so much easier if it's 12 o'clock after the auto can has been uh, applied. So that's actually a setting for that. So it'll put in auto gain again. It's the gain slider include auto gain set to yes. If you set that to no, like this, then it'll indeed change when you new, uh, load new tracks, so you can see what auto gain is doing uh, here. But I suggest you just keep it at yes, so that once auto gain has done its thing, it goes to 12 o'clock and it's ready to be manually adjusted from 12 o'clock if needed. So where does uh, the track uh, know about this? Well, that's from the analysis. So if you go into the tag editor, you can actually see that this has been de uh, de detected at 2.83, uh, a gain of 2.83, meaning it's above where it should be according to Unity. So that's where, why when you hover here, it's decided to turn it down 2.01 dB. So that's basically why this, and of course you can change this in the uh, in the editor, if, in the tag editor, if you want to, but then you just mess up everything because that's what it's been analyzed as a correct result. So if you think that's wrong, the better thing to do is just to reanalyze it. So that's auto gain, and uh, that's just basically working. That means that if you set it up like this, you probably don't really rarely need to touch the gain knobs, and you definitely don't need to like put them at uh, 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock every time you load a track to get the correct gain structure. That's just wrong. That's just the wrong kind of setup. We'll get back to what you can do in, in a too hot situation in a second. So uh, that was a little bit extra about the gain map. These are pretty pretty simple. It's just not meant to, to be used like, oh, this is where I'm playing my master right now. 
this is this is my uh, my lever right now. That's not the default. They're all the way up and all the way down. They're for mixing. So don't use those those. Then there are uh, the master knob, and I was saying sometimes uh, you don't use it, and sometimes you do use it. Well, it's the best place inside virtual DJ. And then there are people saying, well, you should probably not put it above uh, uh, 12 o'clock or maybe a little bit more because that's how the old amplifiers were handled. They didn't really do anything much after uh, 2 o'clock. Uh, they just introduced uh, noise or distortion or whatever. That's not the case here. 100% all the way up is just let, let uh, the input signal go through to the output signal. There's no amplifier here. So 100% is totally fine. It's not uh, distorting everything, anything. It's not... Uh, it's not uh, uh, putting you into a red, anything like that. You only need to touch it if you want to turn it down. So the other thing about the master I put is that uh, uh, it may not be the place where you handle your, your master volume because you might have it someplace later in the signal chain. You might have a totally external mixer that's doing this stuff. Then you just leave the master volume all, all the way up at 100%. Um, so then it just go through, it's just taken out of the equation, if you will. Uh, another thing is that if you have some controllers, like maybe some cheaper controllers, then when you turn the master volume on the controller, you'll actually see the master volume uh, 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 move because what it's, it's just meeting, it's just changing the master volume. And that's good and fine. It's just this, exactly the same thing you're doing on your controller as you're doing when move, using a mouse to move it right here. So that's totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. Then you may have, have another type of controller, like for instance, my, my Denim's. Uh, when you turn the master master volume on those, uh, it, it definitely changes the, the volume, but nothing happens on the screen here. It's just still at 100%. And that's because they're totally hardware-based without any MIDI functionality. So it does do the stuff hardware-based. So you can't see it inside virtual TD. It just needs to be set at 100%. And then there are the interesting ones. Those are the ones where you just know it's hardware-based. You can read up that it's hardware-based but it still turns the master volume in here when you turn the master volume. Like for instance on the DDJ-1000. So what's going on? Well, what's going on is that it has an addi additional MIDI feature setting it in, and that MIDI feature is being detected and it moves the master volume. So that's fine, but why don't it then uh, cut the volume down twice as much as what you wanted to? That's because uh, Virtual DJ has a, a fake feature. So if you go into uh, here and we go in and look at mapping and look up the, uh, the DDJ-1000. Gonna be down here, very popular uh, mixer, uh, or controller. Was that a lot? That's a lot. Here we go. Then you can see the mass volume mapping looks exactly like you would expect it to. Down here, mass volume is mass volume. But if you look at the on init, the first, thing, the first thing that happens when you connect the controller, it enables the fake master. It also enables the fake headphones and the fake headphone mix. So that's just because all this is hardware based, but you want the feature because it can send MIDI signals so that when you move it uh, on the controller, it moves on the screen, including these two, but they don't do anything because Virtual DJ knows not to do anything about it because it's fake. So far, so good. So that's basically all. But then you might see, well, but then if I go into the red, but um, for some reason I'm going into the red, that can indeed happen. So let me just uh, load the same track on both of these decks. So if we go into uh, a hot place oh, somewhere over here, play the track and clone it. You can see I'm actually getting clipping. Um, that's the, uh, the limiter that's kicking in, and you can see it's 0, 3.1, 0. So it's actually kicking in and removing some of my volume. And that's not good. This source is, of course, a worst uh, case scenario because both my decks were turned all the way up, and I cloned and I went to the, uh, the most, uh, the hardest part of the, uh, the loudest part of the track, and uh, I, I cloned the deck so it was exactly on top of each other, so it couldn't get much worse than that. But to fix that, uh, and the same if you have a, a controller that's really hot, so you tend to go into the red, even though you've done everything I've said in this video, you have the CODB setting. That just generally lowers everything on the system. So if you go in here, and I set it to, for instance, minus three, that'll fix it here. I think 
it'll be enough to set it to minus one. Then we'll get a tiny bit, but we have to remember that this is the way worst case scenario on this specific setup. So let me just try it. So I'll play again here. Mm. Something fun. I clone it. And you can see, still get a little bit. Okay, but maybe too much. So then we can indeed go in and say, Zero dB, I want you at minus three. Go to the hot place again, clone again. And see, now we don't get any limit like kicking in. So, uh, so that's how you bring down the general volume and create headroom for yourself that you can then fix later. So that's basically how I think you should handle gain and how you should handle volume in virtual DJ. One final thought is that some sound cards, especially if you just run on the Windows sound card or the, the operating system sound card, whatever's in the laptop, you also have volume control inside uh, the operating system. Uh, on, uh, on regular like sound cards, external ones and, uh, and, uh, and control of uh, sound cards, that just goes all the way up also. So and that is uh, control either here or uh, hardware-based on the physical controller. Uh, but on, uh, on Windows, you need to also remember to, to look at that and maybe bring it up to a certain level or all the way up or whatever. So that's a little bit of a, uh, an extra thing to remember. But that's basically uh, all in this video. Set gain to auto, rarely touch it. Don't use this for volume. Don't use this for volume. Instead, use this for volume in a simple kind of setup or set it at 100%. That's totally fine. And take care of it later down the line. And then if you feel your system is running too hot, change the zero dB setting to create headroom.